Now, as we always do, the biggest stories of the week. Amber and Andy, I'm going to show you a clip package referencing major news stories. You need to watch these clips, and you tell me what's the story. Here we go. Okay. That is, I think, New York City. Oh, okay. That's, That's a speechifying. Lecture. These are two hands. Those are two white hands. They're in love. And this is the end that of that a, movie. A spinning top. Okay. Uh, it's got to be the debate. This is the vice presidential debate. It was a dream. Final answer. <laughs> Points for you all. Oh, good. The story is, on Tuesday night, CBS hosted this election's first and only vice presidential debate between Tim Walz and J.D. Vance. Who can tell me what was the media's biggest concern going into the debate? It was probably that anyone would care. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear the answer to that question from the spin room. Also from the spin room, a very tight spin room, so everybody's right next to each other in there, Garrett. It really doesn't even qualify as a spin room. It's a spin corridor. A spin room, spin closet, whatever you want to call it. I call it a spin broom closet or a spin <laughs> safe room. It is rather cramped in here. That is what America cares about. How big is the spin room at the <laughs> vice presidential Does debate? Does it matter if you don't have a big spin room? It's not the size of the spin room. It's how you spin it. Right. <laughs> it, also, it also was very cold that night. <laughs> oh. That's you. That's the spin it. room had just been swimming. <laughs> <laughs> the big takeaway was that both debaters were well behaved, except for that one tense moment when the moderators fact checked JD Vance. Can you tell me what statement JD Vance made that needed to be corrected? It was about the illegality of the Haitians in Springfield. That's true. Yeah, correct. Oh, my God, you do one. Yay! Yeah. The moderators correct advance on his immigration facts. Just to clarify for our viewers, Springfield, Ohio, does have a large number of Haitian migrants who have legal status. Thank Margaret, you. Margaret, the, the rules were that the you economy, guys weren't going to fact check. I think it's important to say what's actually going on. I'm lying. <laughs> Vance had a lot to say on Tuesday, but he was criticized for one thing he didn't say. Donald Trump lost the yep. election. Vance would not acknowledge that Trump lost the 2020 election. Take a look. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to... that is a damning non-answer. You know how mad a white man got to be to... <laughs> <laughs> I, I ought to have to... <laughs> he looked like a little pink-faced cabbage patch kid. <laughs> so cute. Vance's biggest praise of the week didn't come from Trump. Does anyone know how Georgia Congressman Mike Collins pumped up his preferred candidate? He posted a picture of J.D. Vance. Yeah, Amber, what's your guess? That. <laughs> <laughs> Congressman Collins posted an edited photo of Vance the morning after the debate. Now, if anyone doesn't remember what J.D. Vance looks like on a regular day, it's that. And here's what Collins posted. <laughs> oh. Let's, let's go side by side. Let's see if you can see the difference. See if you can see. Wow. Wow. J.D. Hemsworth. <laughs> that boy went from an Ohio 6 to a New York 7 immediately. <laughs> I saw that and was like, Siri, play TLC's Unpretty. <laughs> so the story is... <laughs> Who do you think got that joke? <laughs> You is me, end of list. Is it? I mean, no one knows what was happening oh, in the video for Unpretty except you and me and yeah. that one lady. That's it. <laughs> That's it. By the way, I'm fact checking Amber. She is correct. <laughs> <laughs> now, the debate might not have had a clear winner, but everyone. But what happened in the video for TLC? No, in the video for Unpretty by TLC, uh -huh. it's them um, singing about how no one feels beautiful by today's standards. So it's people getting. Fake hair, a girl gets fake boobs, and the boobs get taken out. A girl feels fat, a girl feels too skinny. It's a beautiful message. You can love your hair if it don't grow. You can fix your nose if he says so. <laughs> you can buy all the makeup a man can make. But if you can look inside you, find out who am I to be in a position to make me feel so damn unpretty. Okay, they know it. Wow.
Well, it's not every day that I'm made to feel white. <laughs> <laughs> The story is the debate may not have had a clear winner, but everybody in the spin zone definitely is a loser. And no judgment. <laughs> no judgment, but Georgia Congressman Mike Collins needs to triple check that he's using incognito mode. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for Meet in the Middle, where we find common ground between two people who would never be caught hanging out together. Okay, on one side, we have Eric Adams, Francis Ford Coppola, Emily Blunt, and Bobby Brown. Oh. Wow. And on the other side, we have Kesha, Ted Cruz, Joaquin Phoenix, and Aretha Franklin. Hmm. First up, we've got Booty Call. Which two of these people both claim to have had a sexual encounter with a ghost? Oh, wow. Okay, oh. Eric Adams has to be one of them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say be. Bobby Brown and Kesha. That's nope. who I was going to say. Oh, good. Yay! Yay. I almost think it should be Ted Cruz, because why would any live human want to have <laughs> The answer is Bobby Brown and Kesha. Oh! Yeah! Do I know my ghost fuckers or what? <laughs> In a 2022 interview, Kesha told a reporter her encounter was fairly innocent, saying, quote, it was a touch down the body, so full disclosure, I never actually slept with a ghost, but she did wake me up in a very sensual way. Okay. Oh. And here's Bobby Brown telling Larry King about his supernatural tenderoni. It was a ghostly person. And you had sex with the ghostly person? Yes. I had no choice. She... I was mounted. Oh, she mounted you? Yes. Bobby Brown was actually being very PG. Mm -hmm. He told the story in his memoirs, and in the memoirs, <gasps> Bobby wrote, quote, I looked up, and in the mirror, I could actually see a white woman straddling me on the bed. The sensation felt exactly like sex. I could feel my penis inside of her and everything. It was not a dream. <laughs> then Bobby added, I'm not making this up, and let me add this. This was before I ever touched any drug besides weed and alcohol. <laughs> it's never a good look when you have to tell a story and go, but this was before the crack. <laughs> Do y'all think that's true? You think ghosts out here like trying to like get freaky with us? I think that Bobby Brown cannot tell when he is sleeping and when he is awake. I believe Bobby Brown. Them ghosts be wild. I had sex with a widow and the husband showed up. <laughs> That's not a joke. I'm not. I know we have a game to play, but I'm just telling you. Right? Like, we was getting ready to do it, and I caught a charley horse, and I heard something whisper, stop it! Michael, is he kidding or not? I'm trying to figure it out. No, I'm making Georgia 2003. I got a charley horse in both legs trying to have sex with a woman with a dead husband. I believe him. I'm not lying. How Next... long, how long no, had he been... No, No, I'm not. How long... Had he been dead... Five months. Five months. Yeah. Five oh, months? Yeah, it was... That's close. respectable. Wow. Next up, we've got... When Brian... you met, how long did it take... <laughs> how long did it take for it to come out that she was a widow? The fact that she was a widow turned you on. That's Just what I'm say saying. It, boy. And was this before you touched alcohol and weed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This was before the crack. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got Bride or Die. Which two of these people both say one of their favorite movies is The Princess Bride? Oh, Ted Cruz is Absolutely. one of those. I want to say... I think you should say Eric Adams, because he's weird, too. Right. Eric Adams would never say that Princess Bride was his favorite movie, even if it was. So then it's got to be Francis Ford Coppola. Well, okay, we'll go with Coppola. <laughs> Coppola, Coppola and Cruz. Coppola and Cruz. We're going to say Coppola and Joaquin. The answer is... Emily Blunt oh. and Ted Cruz. Oh. oh. Emily has talked about how The Princess Bride was one of her favorite movies when she was a kid, while Ted's passion for the film is still going strong. One of my favorite scenes is, is when Wesley, the Dread Private Roberts, is brought in to Billy Crystal. And Wesley goes, true love. You're right. There's nothing better except a nice mutton lettuce and tomato sandwich when the, when the mutton is so lean, it's so good. And then suddenly Carol Kane from the outside goes, liar! Shut up, bitch! I'm not a witch of your wife! But after what you just said, I wish I wasn't. The problem is he's afraid. Ever since Prince Humperdinck fired him, he's been afraid. What? I told you not to say that name. What name? What name? Humperdinck, 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 Humperdinck. I can't hear you! I can't hear you! <laughs> That's why I love the movie. <laughs> I just had no idea Billy Crystal impersonation could be that anti-Semitic. 
Let's do Brass Masters. Which two of these people both played the tuba? Aretha. Aretha and Francis. There's no way Aretha Franklin played the tuba. Yes, Aretha there is. Aretha and Francis. Joaquin final answer. Phoenix and Eric Adams. Oh, you're about to feel so stupid. Francis Ford Coppola and Aretha Franklin. Oh. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're out of time. <laughs> so we didn't get to that last clue, but Eric Adams and Joaquin Phoenix are both vegans, and they both vowed to kill Batman. Oh. Uh. <laughs> that was Meet in the Middle. Team Amber and Team Michael, you both get five no-questions-asked ghost hookups. Congratulations. Oh.